Sigma Comics is one of the up and coming and probably one of my favorite indie publishers right now. And today I am extremely honored to have HH from Sigma Comics himself, the creator and writer of Here Comes Calico. Now I'm going to show off a little bit HH before we get into this, but I've got all six issues, or sorry, excuse me, five issues that have come out so far of uh, Here Comes Calico. And I'm, I'm really excited to have you kind of talk a little bit more about it. But right now, I've got you on the channel because you have a current um, kick, or campaign going for issue number six in the eight issue series. So uh, could you give us like a little bit of backstory as to who Calico is, how he was created, and just kind of your thoughts and ideas of how this came to be? Sure. First of all, thank you, Max, for having me on. Big fan of MVP. Uh, where <laughs> Thanks, we'll see man. You. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, and, and uh, hello to the audience, uh, comic book fans, real comic book fans. Uh, yeah, the uh, the Calico. The Calico is a character that, that uh, obviously hopped out of my imagination based on experiences. I, I'm from the Bronx. I'm, I'm also a former fighter, a, mm -hmm. a former professional fighter, an amateur boxer from, from the Bronx at a very, very high level. And I was able to uh, have uh, pretty uh, intense and very high level pugilistic experiences with some of the best fighters uh, that we have in the country. Uh, and I have lots of stories. Unfortunately, some of them relate to uh, people who uh, mistreated animals. And, uh, you know, let, let's just say that Hector Gill Calico is uh, a, an idealized version of what I would do, frankly, uh, if, if I was in his shoes and I came across and, and I was given the opportunity that Hector Gill uh, receives in the Calico. The Calico receives intel on people who abuse and kill animals and he goes after them with extreme and I mean extreme justice. Batman leaves the bad guys tied up for Commissioner Gordon. The Calico leaves animal abusers tied up in hefty bags in the East River. So uh, if you're a fan of uh, New York City, if you're a fan of tough, seriously tough and knowledgeable uh, anti-hero fighters, you're really going to love this series. This series is for people who are fans of The Punisher. Uh, I would say Deadpool, Wolverine, Batman, certainly. Absolutely. I would say Batman... And the Punisher, probably the, the closest. Um, his intensity uh, is is quite, quite. Uh, in, he, he, let's just say he reaches beyond Punisher intensity when it comes to how he deals with the bad guys. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man! And that's actually one of the the reason why I have so much fun reading your series is because it. Uh, I, I kept like kind of almost referring it to '90s like Chuck Dixon, Chuck Dixon uh, Punisher, or 90s Todd McFarlane Spawn. It's very gritty, it's it's very um, down on the streets, you know, like you're seeing kind of the worst of humanity when they're, right. and, and like you said, when we see, we literally see the abuse done to some of these animals, but then you see the justice that Calico right. brings on these just, just, evil people and that's another cool thing about the book is that it's a uh, I, I love that on the back it always has justice for all and it's right. it's basically the this idea that there are some pretty bad humans in the world but the worst of them all are these that abuse and hurt animals and so we don't really have superheroes uh, or vigilantes that have specifically taken that, those dudes out. And so Calico kind of fills a, a, a niche, fills a hole that has been missing from superhero comics in that regard um, by taking out some of these like evil, evil dudes. And it's something that a lot of people uh, can get behind. It's a lot of people, right. it's a, something that a lot of people can back. Um, you know, I myself have a pet cat. And so every time I see, you know, a, a poor cat that's in the in the book that's like beaten up or, or is tied up or something but then i see the justice done it's like oh it's 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 a great <laughs> final you know uh, it's a cherry on top of what we as readers love to see with these like kind of vigilante heroes um so yeah man i i just uh, i have to 
thank you for bringing that into this into this book. And also, uh, just to kind of reiterate what you've been saying is this kind of Batman, um, Punisher, Darkness, Spawn type of character, which is re- which is really great. Right. Well, listen. Um, first of all, you're welcome, and I can't give that. You're welcome myself. There's a team, a wonderfully talented team, uh, that includes myself, Renato Pinto, who's our interior artist, Garnabiel, who's our cover artist, just hitting home runs left and right. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Grimaldi doing wonderful work on the colors. Our production team at TriStar. Um, we just, you know, we have a really good, solid team that's really getting it done. Uh, and all of us are animal lovers. I should include Casey in there who helps us. Uh, behind the scenes. There's so many people who, who make Sigma Comics what it is, and, and every single one of us are animal lovers, work in animal welfare, animal care, animal rights, animal rescue. There's so many facets and categories of the animal universe, animal um, uh, love and care uh, universe. Then all these people are working with us and to make this book, and you could tell it in the book. You know, My mother always said, you know, you can see love. There's an identifier, and it's when you see pure, true quality. Someone gives 100% passion behind a book, and then you look at that price and you say, "Holy crap! This thing's only 2.99." You know, yeah. um, it's it's amazing. How does something that looks this feels this good, looks so good, smells this good? When you pick up when you pick up one of our books, you know, it's just a just a, a floppy comic book, but there's a weight to it. There's a smell to it. There's a grit and grind to it. There's a texture to it that is unlike any other comic book out there, and it's only $2.99. That's love. That's what you're feeling. You're feeling the love and weight of people who love animals, who hate animal abuse, with a hero that goes after those a-holes with a, the, the most extreme justice you could possibly imagine. And, and it's knowledgeable, it's discerning, it's careful, it's methodical. This guy is a true professional in what he does. Uh, this isn't a sloppy, uh, you know, some of us see this as some kind of revenge porn. Uh, in essence, th- there might be a slight truth to that in that uh, there is the satisfaction of the primal, the primitive uh, desires within us to see good overcome evil. And that, yes. But what you were mentioning before about that cherry on top, what you're talking about is the delivery of pure satisfaction to our readers, all of whom love comics that are finally seeing something in comics that they haven't seen in a while. You mentioned the 90s. You know, I can go into two things. The state of comics today with the satisfaction of seeing a character like this, getting it done uh, on some, you know, newsprint pages that are rough and and gritty. And also the satisfaction of of, um, addressing a very serious social ill, which is uh, animal abuse. So yes, our readers, every single one of them is either a hardcore comic book fan who's, you know, loves Batman, you know, Spider-Man, you know, the Punisher, Wolverine, and and is just thirsting for that kind of hero again in in comic book pages. Uh, And also uh, people who are, as you pointed back uh, uh, before yourself, an animal lover, somebody who cares about animals. So what we're delivering, Max, is pure satisfaction we're we're delivering a a satisfying product you know when you go and uh you know one of my favorite things in the world is a strawberry milkshake okay (laughs) i haven't had one in in a while and and i owe myself one but there's nothing like when you stand in line at that shake shack or wherever you, you get your favorite uh milkshake and you just take that first few sips and you're like yeah this this is the good stuff right here (laughs) That's what our readers get. They love Here Comes Calico, and I'm glad you love it too. Absolutely, dude. Uh, I wanted to actually note, because you'd said something in there, basically how this guy isn't just, well, first of all, the, the book is itself isn't just revenge porn, and it's not just, he's not just a, a brawler. And I think right. the best example of that is, I think it's either an issue one or two, where he says something where he's he's angry he just uh watched a video of one of these poor animals be kind of mutilated and so he goes to the boxing gym but in in the in the caption box he says you know in this state of mind 
It is the best time to train, but the worst time to fight. And that is your that that is your boxing experience. That's your fighting experience coming into the book and saying, "Listen, you if you've got this in your head, you can train all you want. It's going to be a great workout, but if you go fight someone, that emotion is going to probably overtake you and make make you're you're going to make mistakes." And so reading that is like it, it's just so well done in that only a professional would be able to have that type of mentality. Um, so only Calico would know that, that that is something that he needs to do. But also, that is the writer. That's that's you and your team inputting your wisdom into the book as well. Nice. So um, yeah, just a, a great recollection of that. And then uh, there was another thing that I was going to say as far as the two ninety nine price tag, which sure. I mean just beautiful right. that that's exactly yeah. what i think uh you know dc what was it a year or two ago they were like holding the line at 299 and then the next year they're now at like up oh, 599 <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> oh great thanks um yeah so i love the price tag but also you have uh on the campaign and i'll put that in the description below so that you guys can see sure. that um but in the uh on your campaign you can there are a couple different tiers where one is like you can you can catch up on all the books and get issues one through six, um, and you can also do either a reader copy or a collector's copy. So could right. you go into like a little bit more of of that in terms of what you're getting with a readers and a collectors copy? Sure. Well, before I get to that, I just want to hit on what you mentioned about the, the writing piece and the knowledge of the fighting because yeah. that is very important. And kudos to you as a, a professional. You know, I don't know how many of your readers uh, realize, but you are a combat veteran. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, we owe you a debt of gratitude. And I appreciate what you've done mm -hmm. for this great country. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And, you know, this is the kind of thing that, you know, uh, perceptive individuals like yourself who have been professionals in combat understand. Uh, you know, many of our readers are, are vets as well. And they love the book for that reason. But, yes, as you pointed out, that's issue one. Uh, this is something that a professional is going to know. Once you get in there, uh, you don't want to be pissed if you're going to be in, in a combat situation because then you're allowing emotions to override your technical capability. And it's the last thing you should be doing when you have your life and the lives of others uh, you know, at risk, mm -hmm. right? So you need to make sure that all the, the time that you spent behind the, you know, the wheel, behind the, the gears of a plane, you know, uh, behind the machine gun, or behind you know the ropes in a boxing gym are credited and you as the professional are the exemplar of all the years and sweat and blood that you shed for your trainers because you and your family uh going back to you know eons you're a representative of your family of that crest of that gym uh, you know of of that you know airline whatever it is that you do as a professional that's what it's about okay so the second part of that is for the readers as a contrast to what we're getting today. This is why it's so important. I say this to you young writers out there. Know your material, okay? You don't have to be a professional, but you have to research. You can't just come on a title and start writing. You have to, if you're not a professional in something like I was, okay? At least understand it so that when you are uh, putting out the information to the people who know it, they're not gonna turn away from your book. And that's happening every day uh, in comic books. To the price point, absolutely. This is something that you know, we approach this as comic book fans as well. There's no way in the world you're going to get me into a comic book shop and pay $5.99 for a comic. Okay? <laughs> it's just not happening. Okay. So I'm from New York. I don't know where, you know, everybody else in the audience is from, but uh, it'll be a, you know, a cold day in hell before you get me in a comic book shop to pay that much. Uh, I'll pay a couple of bucks, especially if it's a good a comic book. Let's get back to what comic books are supposed to be. They're supposed to be entertaining pieces of content that should leave you satisfied or, 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 or sad or happy or whatever it is, Peace, uh, emotion, okay? Comics should, should elicit emotion, that's what they're for. And they are wonderful because they allow you to get away and, and into uh, another, a different space that's very imaginative, creative. To the Kickstarter, yes, um, we have a bunch of tiers. Uh, in addition to the, 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 uh, the suite of comics that we have, that people just jump in and read the the whole set, we just added add-ons, okay? Uh, individual issues to add-ons because we're getting lots of people saying, hey, uh, uh, you know, I love this for, for my friend, but I personally am missing issue five. Can you please add that on? 
And by the way, can you add, you know, one as an add-on too, because I have a, a friend that I don't want to give a whole set to, but I, I would like to, you know, give one at least to, because that, mm -hmm. that would be a nice gift. Uh, so we just decide, you know, what, we're just going to put all of it as add-ons, all the issues on, so that, you know, you could mix and match however you want to do it. So we're giving the, uh, you know, the customers the flexibility what they want to do. If you were truly able to engage all of our prospects and customers that we meet, we would easily be in, in the, you know, very, very high five figure and even possibly low figure totals because every single, and I'm not joking about this, Max, every single um, event that we do, and frankly, the only reason why we're doing, you know, it's crazy to go on all these uh, uh, shows every weekend. Well, there's a reason, there's a method to the madness. The only reason we're doing it is because we're literally selling out in every single show we're doing. Yeah. Who, you know, name one comic book and by new, uh, I was going to say name one new comic book, but name one new publisher. Any any comic book publisher is less than five years old who's selling out routinely. Well, we are. We're less than, we are less than two years old and our comic book sells out everywhere we go. Okay. And this is all to say, if we translated our success on the road to their Kickstarters, we'd easily be in the uh, six figure uh, numbers. And it's just that no one really knows about us. And then you'd think a comic book that uh, fights against animal abuse would definitely uh, attain the project we love uh, moniker on, on Kickstarter, it's buried in the bottom, you know, and I don't know why I think because we, I didn't realize how political the uh, comic book landscape was these days. You know, we, mm -hmm. we don't, we made it very public that we don't discriminate against any people uh, r relative to their politics, their height, their colors, you know, what planet they come from. We love everybody that loves comics and animals. We have readers that are right. We have leader, readers that are left. We have readers that are all around the orbit, gay, straight. It doesn't matter to us. If you love animals and if you love comics, you're going to find a home reading Here Comes Calicos from Sigma Comics. And some people, I guess, didn't like that at, at Kickstarter because we, uh, we absolutely welcome everybody with open hands. We're not going to discriminate. And we're going to continue uh, with that same mentality you know we're called sigma comics for a reason we don't follow anybody we go right through so yeah. we, we go right through the door you know yeah <laughs> well I, I will actually end it there because i think that's a, a perfect encapsulation of the sigma comic mentality which is we welcome everyone like our right. fans are across the board uh, welcomed right. in any aspect, in any culture, Absolutely. background, race, right. religion, you know, all that stuff. Um, and and the criteria are simple. If you love comics and you love animals, like you said. That's right. Um, that's so right. I, I, I think uh, that's a great send off here um, to kind of, you know, wrap all this up because uh, that, I think that's truly what people want is they want a cause to get behind and right. they also want great comics. So how how could you, uh, you know, how could you wish for anything more? Um, it, it's the best way. It's the best way to exactly. fight animal abuse is by reading our comics. It's the best way to get over the ills that you're feeling of not finding a good comic book that you enjoy today. You know, this was an easy thing back in the 80s and 90s when I was reading comics. It's not so much today. I've, I've gone into comic book stores and I picked up comics and I, I'm like, how, how can I even read some of this? You know, uh, I'm finding more pleasure and satisfaction from the indies and if mm -hmm. you're going to support indie comics you really need to support this one go on kickstarter as soon as this as soon as you watch this go on kickstarter.com type in here comes calico and you're going to find here comes calico six and listen do your thing it's only uh, i think it's like five bucks for a reader copy and six bucks or i, I don't know which one it's like five or six bucks for a reader copy and they made ten dollars for the collectors but we always meet our goals and what that means is you're going to get a signed copy because that's the first tier. And so go go and do it. Listen, it's the best way to fight animal abuse. You're going to love. Here comes Calico. Calico does not mess around. He goes right through the front door and out the back with bad guys in tow. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, No truer statement has been said because uh, after reading the series, you guys will absolutely, uh, absolutely know what HH is saying here. So, uh, but yeah, before you go, brother, thank you. Just a huge thank you for coming onto the channel. And um, yeah, everyone go uh, support and back this project. 
And if you like what you've heard today on this video, uh, go back and read some of these back issues and let me know in the comment section below if you guys would like HH back on the channel or if you would like me to do maybe a comic review as we go through issue one, two, three and kind of do maybe a review of those. Um, but yeah, once again, thank you so much HH for, for being on here, brother. Uh, it's always a pleasure. It's nice to uh, get to talk to you um, in, in this environment, not this loud, convention <laughs> hall you know but uh yeah it's Absolutely. always a pleasure man thanks buddy likewise thank you for having me on i appreciate it and much success to the show and looking forward to seeing you on all the shows as well as on think incredible again you're the best thank you appreciate you of course yeah thanks brother thanks again for watching guys